Hey, welcome to Max 8 tutorial number 12. Box in a box with Mr. Box. Um, in tutorial 11, we were stealing stuff and oh, it's just not there. Where is it? There it is. So we stole this and we stole this and here it all is. But um, one of the last things I wanted to sort of tell you, and this is kind of, you know, how to work in Max more than how to do specific things. So we stole all this stuff, but one of the other things about Max is that, um, you know, remember the help patchers are patchers and you're working in a patcher, and um, we're just going to find out something else about a patcher, and that is this. When you've got something here and you've got it working, you can of course put it into presentation mode to make it clean, but sometimes you just want to get rid of stuff and get it out of the way. And let's just look here as a perfect example of nothing I really need. So I'm unlocking my patcher here. I need access to this toggle to turn this on, but I really don't need access to any of this. I know what it does, but it can do it without me looking at it. So I'm highlighting everything and one of two ways to do this, you can go up to edit and say encapsulate, or you can hit shift command E. Okay, so we'll just do it this way, encapsulate. And as soon as it's encapsulated, that means it puts it, I know this is going to be crazy, in a patcher. So inside your patcher, and this is your main patcher, you now have what we call a sub patcher, or you can just call it a patcher. Everything's a patcher in Max. A box within a box within a box. So it's in a patcher now. You don't have to, but you could name it. So I'm clicking there and I'm putting a space. You can either have P or patcher, it doesn't matter, but then a space, and then a name. Um, this was a like a tempo thing. Now, for those of you in my class watching this, you'll probably want to just kind of put your some sort of name identifier on this so that it doesn't get confused with anyone else's objects should they be handed in for something. So I'm just going to call it Tempo Johnny. Okay, there we go. Tempo Johnny. And I'm going to lock my patcher again. And if you click on, if you double click on this while it is locked, a patcher opens up, and as you may remember, there used to be a metro there, there used to be a counter, there used to be a number box, and there used to be prepend fetch. All those things are still there. This is an inlet, so this is where it comes into the box. That's this right here. So this toggle is going to feed now into here, which is actually this inlet, and feed the on and off to the metro. Metro is going to go through the counter, this will go up here, and this is going to say fetch 1, fetch 2, fetch 3, fetch 4, fetch 5, all the way up to 16. And it's going to spit it out here through the outlet box, and that means it comes out right here. Okay, so we're going to put this away and know that all of that stuff will just be done inside this box. So now, even when we're working in our unlocked mode, We've cleaned things up significantly. So then, you know, you start looking around after a while and you say, well, how could I make this whole patcher a whole lot cleaner? And, you know, you're like, well, do I ever really need to look at this? Because now it's controlled. This is no doubt. And in, in, if you didn't have another way to do it, you would double click on this to find out what your output was to MIDI. However, in the last video tutorial, we installed the MIDI info object, and now we know we control where that goes, and it goes to the AU synth. Um, so I think we could just encapsulate this too if we wanted to, and we could have a meaningful name for it. Um, now, what was that uh, group of keys? I'm just going to go look at it again. Encapsulate is shift. 
Command E. If you're on a PC and you do the same thing, you go to edit and then scroll down here, you'll see that it says like shift control E or something. I don't know what it is, but you'll have to look here on a PC and then you'll be able to see exactly what it is. So I'm going to say encapsulate again. And now just those two objects go inside this patcher. I click inside a space and I write um, MIDI out Johnny because I am so worried that I'm going to hand this in and somebody will not know that it's mine or something. So now we've got the this little thing here is going to handle all of the MIDI out. Oh, this is getting getting pretty sleek here. Oh my goodness, I'm looking up at this here and I'm like, I don't need any of this. I'm going to encapsulate this too. What was it? Shift Command E. Away it goes. Uh, this is the uh, note randomizer. Random miser Johnny there we go um, and so that cleans that up pretty nicely now I've just got this bang and a, a note randomizer now looking at my patcher here I am reminded that since I have a load bang and we know that in order to get our MIDI info to work correctly we usually have to bang on this one I'm just going to connect this over here so that every time this patch opens, it's going to bang on that one, and it will make sure that I'm looking for the for all the right um, MIDI outputs that I have on the computer. So another improvement there. Um, I could probably put this away somewhere, but eh, it's a load bang. I can I can live with it. All right. Um, do I need do I need any of this? No, I don't. I don't need that either. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Um, Shift, Command, E, Patcher. Uh, startup, Johnny. Now, uh, these aren't great names, but I'm just giving you this sort of thing, that you could have everything that is supposed to start up in here con contained in here. You could have, you know, all the MIDI stuff contained here and just kind of keep your controls out here. So anyway, that is what we call the sub patcher. And then again, I'm just going to show you, you can always lock your patcher and go look at it. Oh, look, there it is. All of my stuff inside a box, safe and sound. Great. I'm going to close it. Okay. Well, those are exciting things. Now, there is another kind of box. Um, in Max that is, well, I, oh, I, I always feel like I have to split my uh, definitions. Let's just say there is another type of box, and it is a box that you use when you want a graphic interface. Let's imagine for a second that I wanted a few of these. Like, I love this thing. All you got to do is hit this button, and it keeps coming up with different tunes to play, some better than others. Oh, I like that. See? Right? But what if I want to play like this sequence for a little while and then change it to another one and another one? Well, I could just duplicate this. Of course, that's one way to do it. And I think you all know how to do that. But what I can't do is um, maybe, the, maybe this is something that I want to use over and over again. So I'm now going to teach you. I'm going to shut the music off. And I'm just going to teach you very quickly how to make another box, and it is called a B patcher. B patcher. So um, let's move this over here because I'm not going to take the tempo with it, just this stuff. So I'm going to um, I'm going to select all this right here, and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to open a new patcher. There is my new patcher. And I'm going to paste all this stuff into it. Which I think is going to be just fabulous. However, I have 
a problem here that you may remember from these patchers. Well, this has no inlet or outlet, so if I'm going to use it in the future, I'm going to need an inlet and an outlet here. In fact, I'm going to need two because I can see over here that there's one line that comes in here and goes to this um, multi-slider, and there's one line that comes in and it goes to this bang. So I actually need two inlets. So I'm just going to type letter N, type inlet. There it is. I could click on it. I'll just hit um, return and it pops right in there. And now I'm going to option click on it and move over. And then I'm going to connect the first one to, what was it? oh, the tempo, right. Tempo is going to go down to here, right to this one. And then this is going to come in and go right to that bang. So I can bang it externally if I want to. And then I'm going to make this, um, you remember we made our little graphic user interface before that opened as a little tiny cute thing? Um, if you don't remember, that's okay, because we're just going to make this into something that opens like a little tiny cute thing. And here's how we do it. We, oh, hold on, I forgot an outlet. Look, look, look. This has a cord coming out of it. There will be no way to get a cord out of here. So we come down here, type an N, say outlet. And there it is. And we run from the same outlet, the one over there, down to there. So at some point, this is going to substitute for this, but in a very nice way that I will show you momentarily. So what we're going to do is now choose the objects that are going to appear in presentation mode. For that, we need the inspector. And we say, I want uh, you and uh, you to appear when in presentation. And, you know, I want another thing here that will be cool, which is a message that just says um, uh, randomize. So randomize. There we go. And I'm going to make, I'm going to include that in the presentation too. Just going to click that box. Going to click this over to the bang button. And then I'm going to lock my patch and just make sure it works. This does not always work. Sometimes buttons don't, they light up, but they don't send out a bang. But in this case, this one is. So it's all working. Well, that's great. Now we put it in presentation mode. There they are. We unlock it and we arrange things. Uh, I think I'm going to put my random up here. I'm going to put my button over here. I'm going to put this thing up here. It's looking funny-ish. I wonder if I can get this to change size. Yeah, yeah, it can change size. Uh, I don't want to change size too much. I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to stretch this out over here and tell this one to put the text in the middle. So I'm just going to scroll down here. This is important stuff center. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks much better. And then one last thing while we've got this thing here, let's give it a nice background color. Nothing too, whoops, there we go. Remember the, uh, if you, if you click on nothing in the patcher, you usually get the patcher inspector. So I've got the patcher inspector and I come down here to the locked background color and I'm just going to pick a uh, gray because uh, that's what I'm about today. Gray. Just a nice gray. And we'll lock it and we'll take a look at it. Looks great. Um, super duper. Okay, now, this is important. Let's save this. Um, what am I doing? Save as. There it is. And I'm going to save it as the... Uh, randomizer. Okay. And I'm going to save that in my teaching patchers, which is a folder that I have 
on my max search paths. Remember, max has to be able to find it. So there we go, randomizer. That's the thing, save it. Okay, and now, oh, well, we, we can save it again. Uh, there's one other thing we want to do. Unlock your patcher. Sorry, I forgot about this. Uh, that's the patcher inspector. Good. Let's, come on, did you ever get done with that color? Okay, let's scroll down to view and make sure that it actually opens in presentation because when it doesn't, it just looks silly. Okay, so it's going to open in presentation whenever you open this. So now we're going to save it again. And we're just going to put it away. Goodbye. Okay, so over here, now we're going to learn about the object that I was speaking about. Uh, with your patcher unlocked, type N and type B. Oops, not in capitals. B, patcher. And it fills right in there. Okay. And you'll notice when you finish typing it, you get this very clear thing with a very thin blue line. And that's because it's it's an object that is whatever object you attach it to. So let's put this one right here and then open the inspector. And let's scroll down here and try to remember the name of the patcher we just saved. And I believe it was randomizer. There it is, randomizer. So we click on that and we open it. Look at that. It's the randomizer, and it's right inside there. Um, here, let's make some make some room here. I'm gonna move these out of the way. So here's our B patcher, and now I'm gonna move this around. Okay. Now, the general rule with the B patchers, if if your stuff opens and you put it in the upper left corner, you don't have to do too much work here. But if it doesn't open exactly where you want, you can move it around by playing with the offset. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, I don't know what this thing's doing. Where is the offset? There it is, offset. And this is just the X and Y value. I'll just show you very briefly. If, if this ever comes up, you'll care. Uh, 25 and uh, 10, okay? And then you'll see that it moved it 25 to the right and 10 down. But we don't need to do that. We like zero and zero. There. Okay, but if you need to kind of move it around to get it to fit there, and then your other fitting is doing this part. Okay, you'll notice another nice thing about the B patcher here is that it has one outlet and one, two inlets, and you've decided what they are. You might not be able to remember what they are, but um, we know that that's that that they are what they are. Now um, that we put into that patcher, so now if you wanted to, well, let's make sure it works. Lock your patcher for a second. Whoops, lock that and randomize. Look at that. Look at it go. Okay, great. Unlock patcher, and now this is really cool. You click on that and just say, I want four of them. Four? Really? Four? Are you crazy? Hmm, four is a lot. I'm going to have to move them up. Okay, there we go. Four of them. Holy heck. So we hook them up the same way on the output side as this is hooked up. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to hold the shift key down so I can do this all at once. Go there, click to that outlet, click to that outlet, click and to that outlet, click. Oops, I forgot to let go of the shift key. For that, you have to command and just click anywhere and that goes away. Okay. Um, now we have an interesting problem. How do we get them to play? Well, we have this tempo thing here that's spewing out the go fetch instructions. So if we could just 
somehow direct it to the right one of these, that will just work beautifully. And there is an object for doing that. So let's uh, type in, type gate four, and that's how many outlets. And then initial state that you see down here is just which one's open when it opens. And let's just always make it one so that it's always open on one. Now, with a gate, the left inlet controls which gate is open. The right is the, in, is the inlet for all of the data. The data comes in here and it comes out one, whichever one of these is open. So we're going to just uh, connect that up to there. And then we are going to make a bunch of messages. Message uh, one. Uh, you can already guess. I'm just going to It's almost the same if you, so four, three, two. Okay, and then I go here, I hold the shift key down, I go click, click, click. I let go of the shift key this time and I get that one. And then I have this one is going to go up to the top one here. I happen to remember that that's the one that goes directly inside where the um, tempo data used to go. So if you can't remember it, you can reopen the patcher and look at it. Which, by the way, there's an easy way to do, but don't bother me now, I'm working. Okay, here's number three. And here's number four. And these look so ridiculous that I'm just going to go and select them all with using the shift key again. And I'm going to command Q, command Y them, and that turns them into straight things. And then I can just, you know, put them all in the same place so that they're not in our line of sight. And let's see how we do here. We've got, oh, oops, lock our patcher here and go randomize, 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 and um, one. And now we can listen. Uh, turn up the volume here. Now we can listen. Oh, wait a second. This one's still going to play. I have to disconnect it. There we go. In fact, we just don't even need this one anymore. Goodbye. Uh, what was that for? Oh, that was for the the startup randomizer. I'll think about that for a minute. Okay, let's check that this works. Lock it. Turn this on. So that's this one. Let's make sure it's this one. Okay. And then we'll do something we can recognize with this one. Okay, how about two? Yep, okay. Okay, three. And four. Awesome. Well, if that was not enough to end the week with I don't know what is so um, well yeah put a counter in that does these things randomly I suppose um, no that would be too much listen people you've done a great job hang in there enjoy your weird music making machine and I will see you in the next tutorial thank you so much for watching